God bless you, church. For the past few weeks, the anointing and the anointed has been upon my heart. Now, I've gone through scripture by scripture to try and search what God was trying to say to me. I understand that the church is in a position now as it was in the days of Pentecost, where we need a new outpouring of God's Spirit. We need the anointing of God to function in the body of Christ. It's nice to play religious games and to have religious events, but what happens when we really need power? When we really need the fire of God, when we really need the anointing to really destroy the yokes in people's lives. And that's what I want to share with you quickly today. I just want to share some insights that the Lord has given me. And I don't profess to know anything about this. I must tell you, the more I study, the more I feel incapable of actually sharing what I'm about to share. But I'm asking that the Holy Spirit will help me today as I'm sharing some insights that I've been seeing in Scripture. So let's look at the historical context of anointing because I wanted to know, I was looking at this and I thought to myself, where does this come from? There were no commentaries and things that really gave me information. I had to go into the historical context, go look at the history of the Hebrew people. And anointing with oil was traditional and traditionally practiced among Hebrews as a, a, a token of reviving or energizing so people would come to your house and you would revive them or energize them or you would revive yourself and energize yourself with the anointing and in these th that we are going to be talking about the physical things you are going to see some likeliness to what we need today today we do need revival we do need to be revived we do need to be energized and the anointing has that spiritual function as well it was a welcoming an acceptance hospitality and today we need the anointing to feel accepted in the beloved to step into sonship it was honoring the lord has honored us with sonship we are no longer servants we are now sons of the most high they used to honor people with the oil in different ways and then also healing and so many of us so many of us need healing today so many of us need the healing power of god today we need emotional healing we need physical healing we are fighting fight after fight and the anointing of god can put us in a position of victory and this is why the devil is trying to stop this but let's go back also and have a look here at what the bible says about the anointing and the definition of the anointing it's the impartation of god's ability into our lives to do his work that we are called for to do that work and we call that the anointing it's an impartation and if you just look at those scriptures quickly you will see in aaron and his and his son's lives the levitical order the priests were anointed moses had an anointing you can look at numbers 1 11 17 Joshua had an anointing that was imparted from Moses' life. And you can go look at Deuteronomy 34, 9. Saul was anointed as king in 1 Samuel 10, verse 1. And I'll get back to that now. And David was anointed as king in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. And Jesus was anointed to manifest his Messiahship. Uh, we will talk about Acts 10, 38, where God anointed him uh, to destroy the works of the devil. We will talk about that a bit later. But if we look at the spiritual historical context, that is going to the spiritual side of it and looking why anointed, what was the anointing, what was the significance? If somebody was anointed for an office, for a duty, for a work, what was sort of the historical context of that? And you will see the first one is anointed uh, priest. And we, we find this in many scriptures, but there's one scripture in particular that I'm going to be sharing now uh, with you is 1 Kings 19.16. And then anointed as king, the kingly anointing. So you've got the priestly anointing, you've got the kingly anointing, and then you've got the prophetic anointing. You've got all of those anointings together. And if we look at 1 Kings 19.16, we will see here yeah, the instruction that the Lord gave to Elijah to go and anoint Jehu uh, as king over Israel. So he was instructed to anoint a kingly anointing and then also to anoint Elisha, son of Zabat, 
uh, as the prophet so also the prophetic anointing there are numerous scriptures about the anointing and about these offices of the anointing but i want you to understand to know and to just remember these three offices as we continue our study on the anointing we are talking today about the anointing and the anointed and uh, we are excited because we know that it's the anointing that's going to destroy the yoke in the church of Jesus Christ, as people are battling, as people are suffering, as the increase of wickedness is around us, as more and more deception comes, we need more and more of the anointing in our lives. You know, in Matthew 25, it talks about the virgins, 10 virgins, and five ran out of oil. This is a type of the church of Jesus Christ that's going to be running short of oil. And I believe that I'm one of those end time preachers who will not soothe those in the hearing, but one of those preachers who's going to be telling you and saying to you that you need the anointing of God in your life and you need to pay the price for the anointing. We don't have the time to go into this, but there's always a price when it comes to the anointing. You might have the call upon your life, but it will not manifest until you are willing to pay that price and follow God's order and God's instruction. So as we continue our study, what I saw here in the life of Saul was pretty profound. I don't really like to use Saul as an example, but I was reading uh, in Samuel 10, 1 Samuel 10, and, and I was reading the text and I thought there must be a message in this text. And I thought I'd show it to you today as we just go briefly and quickly through it. You can go and read 1 Samuel 10. Uh, and this is where Samuel an, uh, anoints Saul. And I just want to show you these three offices. And there's a there's significance why I'm showing you this. Because I believe what I'm showing you today is not something that I've read. It's not something that somebody told me. It is something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me over a few days of study. Prayer, praying in tongues, lying awake at night, uh, rolling around, thinking about this, not being able to come to the answer. And I believe that one of the most significant parts of this message is going to manifest right there in this slide as I'm sharing with you. So let's go. 1 Samuel 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him, saying, Has not the Lord anointed you leader over his inheritance? Now this talks about the kingly anointing, the anointing in leadership, the anointing where, where we have the capacity to rule because God has ordained it. Uh, and we have this in our lives as believers. We get capacitated where the Lord says, now I am giving you everything. You now rule. And, and, and I am authorizing you in the supernatural, in the spiritual world. I'm authorizing you to step in. But just look at this. But what has to happen if, is you also have to then operate in the priestly anointing. The priestly anointing is the service to God. It's the priority of ministry. It's the priority of the sacraments, of what God wants us to do. And the type of this is seen in 1 Samuel 10, 4, where these men that uh, that Samuel prophesied to Saul and said, you're going to meet these men and they're going to have goats, three goats, which is a type of sacrifice. They're going to have wine, which is the type of the blood and the type of the new covenant. And then they are also going to have bread, which is the revelation knowledge, the word of God, the bread of God, the bread of the presence that was in the temple. So you must see the that what I saw here is I almost jumped out of my skin as I saw this because it really excited me to see this and to see this in the scripture and say, yes, we have to uh, understand what our authority is. We have to understand that God has given us spiritual authority in the anointing as a king and to rule and reign with Christ in this life. But then we also have to understand the priestly function. What are we supposed to do in spiritual service to tap into it? And this is a type of that. And then... Uh, anointed as a prophet. Now you might say, why anointed as a prophet? Because God does nothing before he declares it. He has to declare it. Something has to be declared. God cannot declare it himself because that's not legal. He has to declare it through a human being. 
here on earth today man this is such a revelation because look at this now and i'm already laughing and feeling excited because this portion of the scripture really blew my mind because now i'm seeing something about the prophetic many christians they have the intellectual knowledge they know that they are anointed as a king and they might even operate in the priestly where they are serving god they're doing their call they're doing what they're supposed to do but very few enter into the boldness of the prophetic declaration where you declare what god has for you where you declare what the reality is supposed to be in your life according to the promises of god not according to circumstances according to situations no where you tap into the prophetic by faith by declaring what God is, has already done on the cross and you bring it into fruition, into the physical by the declaration. But read this scripture with me. It's powerful. 1 Samuel 10, 6. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you in power. This is where power comes. It's as, as the power of the Lord energizes us, as we are understanding the new covenant, the, the, the kingly, uh, we are understanding what God did. We are un understanding the restoration of fellowship. We are understanding what he did for us on the cross. We step into the priestly, into the holy service, and we say, Lord, we are putting our bodies as a living sacrifice on the altar. We want to get into your perfect will, according to Romans 12, 1. We don't want to get entangled and, and, and messed up with the things of this world. We want to operate in the priestly. We desire you. We desire your things. We desire your power. We desire your anointing. We want to get into these things. And as we are pushing in and looking and searching and, and knocking and seeking and and we're finding and the Lord starts opening up and revelation starts coming from the word and we start flowing in that we enter into the prophetic where the power is because then we will prophesy we will declare it we will declare it so say for instance you have a intellectual knowledge of healing because you know uh, of the restoration as far as the, the, the kingly is concerned and, and what Christ did on the cross. And even in the priestly, you, you know what to do in terms of to receive your healing. You know what the, the steps are. Until you really declare it in power, it will not manifest in the physical. And what does it say here? Yeah, and you will be changed into a different person. <laughs> and you will be changed into a different person. Simon Peter walked on the water and he sank. He wanted to build tents on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said to Jesus, you will not die, I will stop it. And he was called Satan. He chopped off somebody's ear. But in Acts, when the Spirit came, when the anointing came, when the enablement came that these men were waiting for, they were changed into different people. They were changed into different people. And, and you, you see the message that, that Peter brings in Acts. The prophetic utterance, the, the confirmation of Scripture as he, is, as he is declaring what God did through Messiah. And this for me was just so wonderful to see that the change comes through the anointing in our lives. If we want to change, if we cannot change in the physical. It is the anointing that will change us. We need a revelation of sonship, of kingship, of restoration of authority. We need a, a revelation of the priestly the holy, the functioning, what we are supposed to do, the call, the service in the temple, what we are supposed to do in these temples of ours, then we need the anointing of the prophetic, the bold power as we are endued with power from on high by the Holy Spirit to declare the oracles of God into the atmosphere. Isaiah 10, 27 says, and the yoke will be destroyed, not taken away, it will be destroyed. The yoke that's upon the church of Jesus Christ today will be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing, that yoke will be destroyed. And so many people today need the yoke destroyed in areas of their life. We look at Christ, the anointed one. Messiah is derived from the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means anointed one. This was the Christ prepared declared through hundreds of prophecies that an anointed one would come and bring restoration and establish a kingdom. And this corresponds with the New Testament title, Christ, Christos, anointed one, anointed one. In, in John 1, uh, uh, 41, 
uh, the, the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found Christos. We have found the anointed one. We have found the anointed one and his anointing. Uh, the power of God was present in his ministry as it oozed out. Then also Jesus himself declares himself as the anointed one. When the woman at the well says, I know Messiah called Christ is coming and he will explain everything to us. There's a lack of knowledge. There's a lack of understanding in the church as far as the anointing is concerned. There's a lack, there's a veil over people's eyes when they get into the religion that they cannot see. This woman was not sure if she should worship on the mountain or if she should worship in Jerusalem. She was unsure and when you are unsure you cannot make prophetic utterance. You cannot function in priestly. You cannot function in kingly. You cannot release the power of the spirit and this woman says to the lord no no don't wait we are talking about this i don't understand it but it will be explained when christos comes when messiah comes and then jesus declares he said i will speak to you am he christos the messiah the anointed one who died on the cross so that we could be anointed so that we could be anointed jesus fulfilled all three these offices he operated in all three of them he operated as a prophet john 7 40 he operated as a priest uh, hebrews 6 and 19 verse 7 to 1 uh, uh, and we see that that it says yeah he has become the high priest forever the high priest forever and we see him as the king we see it this in revelation and we also see the sign king of the jews but he was actually the king of the nations in Mark 26. So Jesus operates in all three these offices. And Jesus declares his purpose. He declares his intent. He declares what he's come to do. Christos, the anointed one. Christ, he declares how we can tap into this anointing as the church of Jesus Christ. And start moving in the power of the Spirit. The purpose of the anointing in Christ ministry is found in Luke 4 verse 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom from prison to the, uh, to, and recovery of sight to the blind and to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The good news that you are receiving today as you are listening to this message is that the anointed one died and he died so that you and I can be anointed, so that you and I can step into the anointing, the kingly anointing, the priestly anointing, and, and, and come into the prophetic anointing where we become the mouth of God on earth to preach the good news, to proclaim freedom so that we can make this proclamation. Recovery of sight to the blind so that those that, are, that cannot see all of a sudden can see. Their eyes are opened and they can see. And then to release the oppressed. How many do you and I know that are oppressed in our local churches? How many do you and I know that are oppressed in our workplace? How many do you and I know that are oppressed sitting right next to us today wherever we are? They are oppressed. Why? Because there is no good news preached there is no proclamation made by the prophetic there is no recovery of sight to the blind therefore there is no release of the oppressed and the year of the lord's favor is not understood we think we are living in the year of the lord's wrath we think we are living in god's judgment we think we are living in god's forgetfulness maybe god forgot the planet uh, somebody posted the other day where was god when corona happened let me tell you god was where god always is and always was with his people and we know this because we have the anointing but they don't know it they think that god should have stopped it god should have done that but they don't understand that the curse is working in the planet and prophetic timeline has to be fulfilled the curse will operate in more strength as iniquity and sin increases till the end comes but the church will not run out of oil the virgins that have the oil of the spirit the anointing will not run out of oil you and i will not run out of oil in the name of jesus we need the proclamation of freedom the true gospel message the true gospel the good news we need that today more than ever this message can change your life what can mean nothing it depends upon you as you receive luke for 
18 to 19 and you step into the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus says in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Parisos to the overflowing life, the year of the Lord's favor, the year of grace, the dispensation of grace in the church age where we are at, where we have the capacity to release the power, like Christ said, to do the greater works. But what is the church doing? What is the church doing today? We are playing religion. The scripture declares in Acts 10.38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Let me ask you today, is God with you? Is God with you? Are you healing all of them that were under the power of the devil or that are under the power of the devil? Are you healing them? Are you setting them free? Are you doing good? Are you changing your community? Are you changing your environment? Is the anointing of God flowing through your life as it has to flow through your and my life? I'm going fast today and I want you to listen to this again. I want you to go and search those scriptures. Yes, I did it quickly. There are some mistakes on the slides. It doesn't matter. I trust that you are catching the anointing, the kingly anointing, the priestly anointing, and you are stepping into the prophetic where you can start declaring with boldness. You see, before you get to the prophetic, before you get endured with power, you have to accept it and accept the consequences of being God's mouth on earth today. You will get a few guys hitting you on the mouth. You will get criticism. You will get attacks because it's not popular. It's not popular to drive out devils. It's not popular to heal cancer. It's not popular to raise the dead. It's not popular to heal the sick. It's not popular to walk in God's blessing. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They want religion. They want religious service. But let me tell you, there's no power in religion. Religion robs us of power. Religion robs us of inheritance. Religion robs us of sonship. We need relationship that God moved out the temple. Don't put him back in the temple. He's in your heart. And let me show you some other things as we end off today. There was the anointing worked in the early church in Mark 6, 13, the apostles, it says they drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This was what the apostles did. Then the early church said, James said to the early church, if anyone is sick among you, let him call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The, the final portion of that scripture says, and God will heal them and forgive them of their sins. We are supposed to function in this. But if you do this today in a church, if you walk into a mainstream church and you say, I want to anoint the people with oil, people are going to say, I don't want oil on my head. I don't want you to anoint me. I don't want to do this. I've seen this on television. I know it doesn't work. People have, a, have their own cultural concept of this. But let me tell you, it's about the anointing and the anointed. It's about the anointing and the little anointed. You know what? The early church, the word Christian, Christos, uh, and little Christ th was derived and, and started when people noticed that the early church, not just the apostles, but the early church was moving as a unit in the power of the Spirit. And they said, look at them, they little Christs. And, the, and, and from that day, they were called Christian because it was little Christ, little anointed ones. So the anointed with his anointing has made us the little anointed ones. He was the light that came into the world and then he instructed us to be the light. Now it, the baton's been passed to us and we have to step into this power. You will not get this by watching more television. You will not get this by playing more games. You will not get this by becoming more intellectual. You will only get this by revelation of the Holy Spirit as you sacrifice yourself, God's fire, listen to me, God's fire will only fall on a sacrifice. God's fire will only fall on a sacrifice. And I implore you and challenge you today to be that sacrifice, to be that living sacrifice. In Corinthians, Paul writes to the church in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 21 to 22. He says, yeah. Now it is God who makes us both stand firm in Christ. To stand firm in Christ. In these days there will be many false prophets, but we have to stand firm in Christ. 
He anointed us. God has anointed you. God has anointed me. He set His seal of ownership on us and put His Spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. What is to come? The victorious era of the restoration, the, the, the renewed bodies, the new bodies, the heavenly bodies, the new earth. That is what is to come. The Holy Spirit is a, is a guarantee. It's a deposit. We've received a deposit already. And we are anointed. He has anointed us. 1 John 2, 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all. What does this mean? This means that nobody will be able to destabilize you. Nobody will be able to tell you stories. Nobody will be able to tell you theories. You will have a constant awareness and connection with God to the point where you know all. Not all in arrogance, but all in all that is necessary to step into your kingly anointing, to step into your priestly anointing, and to start declaring in prophetic utterance what God wants you to declare. You have that anointing. You have it. The devil is trying to steal it from you, but you have it. 1 John 2, 27. As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you again. You have this wisdom of the Spirit that the anointing, he says, but as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it is and has taught you, remain in him. This anointing will teach you, it will guide you. Maybe even as I'm sharing this message today, you are experiencing something in your spirit. You're saying, I've been robbed. I've been robbed. My anointing has been stolen. What God has for me has been taken from me. Something is not right here. The devil is a liar. He's been lying to me. Maybe John 10.10 10, where it says the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy has come upon your life and you've experienced the stealing, the killing and the destroying. Let me tell you, stop it right here and step into the anointing. The devil wants to tell you you're a loser. The devil wants to tell you you're a sinner. The devil wants to tell you you're worthless. The devil wants to tell you your path your past, but tell him his future. Do not allow the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy any longer from you in the name of Jesus. Do not allow this. Do not allow this. I want to just make a statement that I made uh, on the internet, um, on Facebook. You know, we always say God wants availability. And, and it's, it's true. God wants us to be available, but it's half true. Because it's not just about the availability. It's not just about the availability. Because even if we are available, it, it means the disciples were in the upper room for, for days on end. They were praying. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. They were praying. They were in unity. But nothing happened because they did not receive the ability yet. They, the availability was there. A lot of us are available. But we must be available in expectation of the of the ability of Christ that's going to start flowing through us. Look, you have to move in the nine gifts of the Spirit. You have to move in the fivefold ministry. Uh, you have to function. God has called you to move from a convert to a to a to a leader. He has called you to move from a convert to to somebody who is going to influence your generation. So availability is wonderful. Don't just be available on Sundays but receive his ability so don't just be available in church on sundays i'm going to church no you are the church but be available and then use his ability step into his ability every day and that's what's going to change your world not just the availability and what i said was god not only wants our availability he wants us to receive his ability today i pray in the name of jesus that you and I will receive His ability. We will step into His ability. We will allow the Holy Spirit to flow through our lives like never before. And we will praise God, lift God's name. And we will become truly the little anointed ones. Christos, the anointed one, has died and has imparted unto us His anointing. We, it's about His anointing in our lives that will break and destroy every single yoke around us in the name of Jesus. And I just trust that you and I will experience His anointing 
in a new way in Jesus' name. I pray that God will bless you, that God will keep you, that God will take you from glory to glory. Father, I pronounce your blessing and the revelation of the anointing as I shared this message. It's not just a message. I pronounce the anointing of Christ activated in their lives now in the name of Jesus. Father, we repent today. We turn around and we surrender ourselves to you in the fullness of joy, glory and power in Jesus' name. Amen.